when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the reading of the word in the name of Jesus. Now we ask that the word come alive on today and every person, every believer, even those, Father, that are pressing to believe. Let the life of the word, Father, penetrate in the hearts, even in the mind. On today, Father, let it be a word that will quicken our spirit, God. That will quicken, God, some things that have died. That will quicken some places in our heart. Let the word, Father, begin to walk up and down the aisle. You said in the beginning, what's the word? But the word was God. We celebrate the God of the word to begin to rise up in our hearts, Father, and bring life, Father, and dispel death, dispel darkness, and everything not of you, God. We apply the blood of Jesus, even though we're hearing today. We'll not be distracted, even though our mind today, our mind will be saved on you, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we praise and bless you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, in Jesus' name. God is so awesome. I looked uh, at this word, and God just dropped it in my spirit, and he was talking about the woman with the issue of blood. Now, all of us have heard of that message and have heard of the scriptures many times in the past, amen? But God pointed out something to me in particular on today, and it stands out in the verse uh, 21. It says, uh, now, this woman that had an issue of blood, let me back up, and she she had dealt with her disease for 12 long years. Now that's a long time to deal with a problem, right? That's a real long time. It's hard to even imagine or to fathom that her problem or her issue that she had, it had been plaguing her for 12 long years. Now in our knowledge today, it doesn't seem like probably the problem she was having was that significant because some women or some people may be able to identify with this. Her disease was an issue of blood, but when you look at the different translation and understand, her problem was is that she had a problem with a flow of blood. It means that even her womanhood, that her flow was continuous. It wasn't once a month, but she had been flowing for 12 long years. Now, for most people, if that happened, you're going to be anemic, you're going to be weak, all kind of stuff is going to be happening to you. Amen? So, in this day and time of 2015, if we have an issue with blood, then it's a medical problem. It's a something that's dealing with our uh, disease, uh, something that would cause us perhaps to be weak in our flesh or in our body. But back in that time, if you had an issue of blood, it was called that you were impure. And it was a, a situation that you were unclean. It was a situation that because she was having this flow issue, she couldn't even really go out among the people. She wasn't even allowed to come to church. <laughs> Let me make it plain. She wasn't even allowed to associate with people. And it wasn't just for once a month, but for 12 long years, this woman was an outcast. For 12 long years, she couldn't come in the synagogue and worship her God. For 12 long years, people looked down on her and when she began to approach them they would cry out unclean unclean so this woman had been in a bad situation for a long time she was a social outcast and she was not she didn't fit in with the regular they did not accept her and so here in verse 21 it says for she said well let's read 20 and behold a woman with a disease with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she said within herself somebody said within herself, within herself. if I may but touch his garment I shall be made whole now the point that God illuminated to me is not what she said out of her mouth he said what she said within herself now the Holy Ghost wants to illuminate on today that some of our thinking is thinking. He wants to illuminate today that some of us ain't thinking right on the inside. He said that she's within herself. She said, what did it say? Let's look at it again. In verse 21, for she said within herself.
myself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. What you saying on the inside? Oh, what were we saying this morning when it was time to get up out the bed? Oh, Lord, I don't want to let this bed go. Lord, my body sure is tired. Do you not know that not only what you say will determine your progression, but what you think will mess you up? What you think will stop your progression, will stop the move of God in your life, will stop you from fulfilling your destiny, the purpose of God. Some of us are messed up in our thinking. And the Holy Ghost said on today that we want the power of the living God to do something in our mind that we'll begin to think like God. Not only just speak and walk and look a certain way when we come to church, but down in my belly, I know that I'm more than a conqueror, that I am an overcomer. No matter what I'm dealing with, I can stand in the middle of hell falling out all around me. But on the inside, my God has made me more than a conqueror. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of God's might. What you been thinking about? Some of y'all saying I can't make it. My education ain't where it needs to be. I don't have enough money. You thinking the wrong thing. I dare you to change your testimony. Not just in your mouth. Somebody needs to begin to meditate. What happened to you dreamers? Begin to dream about where God want to take you. You say, what am I talking about? You say you call, you call to the nation. How many times have you sat there and just began to dream? Saw yourself on the plane. Saw yourself stepping on some foreign land. See, we, we have allowed the world, new age, to take the principles of the kingdom. We have allowed those that are crazy to sit down and meditate. But they ain't got the king of glory. They don't have the power of the living God. They don't have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I dare you to begin to think on some things. My God, my God. God said, I know the plans that I think about you. You don't understand the power of your thoughts. Why you think the devil been telling you to kill yourself? Why you think that the devil would give you a vision of you never succeeding? Because he got no revelation of the power of your thoughts. Oh, he's trying to get in. All I got to do is make him think about it. Think about it. Think about it. I remember years ago, before I got saved, the devil was working overtime. Even before I accepted Jesus as Lord, he kept giving me a picture of myself. You know, God, the Lord was saying, it's time to come in. It's time to come in. I'm like, no, I was going to make a deal with God. I said, no, I'm going to live. I'm going to party. I'm going to do all I want to do. And at the last minute, I'm going to repent so I go to heaven. I'm trying to run a game on God. My God, we stupid. I'm trying to run a game. Oh, my God. I'm going to do what I want to do. I know he merciful. All I got to do is repent. At the last second, he did it to them on the cross. I go straight on into heaven. I can party long as I want. I can sleep around long as I want. Long as I repent. At the last minute. But somebody said the devil is a liar. He ain't nothing but a deceiver. So why did I say that? I used to think that. But at the whole time I was thinking that, he would give me a mental picture of me being in a car and show me the color of a car. And he would show me in a wreck being hit head on and dying instantly. Okay, why was he doing that? Because he understand the principle. Meditate on these things day and night. And then your way shall be prosperous. What have you been thinking on day and night? Now you're wondering why you ain't got no money. Why you been thinking, I'll never get out of poverty. I can't never live in no other neighborhood. You keep on meditating. I guarantee you, you gonna get what you've been thinking on. This woman dealing with an issue for 12 years. But she got a revelation. She said, she didn't even say it out of her mouth. Oh my God, y'all gonna get this. She said within herself, my God, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, then nobody hear her praise. And then nobody hear a word. Ain't nobody gotta know what you're thinking. You can be sweeping the floor, you can be mopping the floor. You can be on your knees cleaning a toilet, but if your mind is trained on God, if you see yourself doing what God called you to do, he's going to raise you up. This woman sitting here, 
she had that issue of blood. And when you look at the scripture, I said, okay, she said within herself. And so I began to study. I said, okay, does that mean that she just said it that one time? Uh-uh. That's not what it means. She said here, it says she said within herself. But when you study the scripture, the scripture and break it down says that she had been saying this. <laughs> the scripture said that it was something uh, that was past tense uh, that had happened uh, a number of times. Uh, she didn't just wake up and say, uh, I believe I'm going to go in and do this. Uh, and it happened instantly. Uh, but I believe for many years, uh, she was saying, I'm waiting on the Christ. And when he comes, the Bible says he got healing in his wings. I'm waiting. Then she got news that Jesus was among the people. She said, I know about him. He is the Messiah. If I can just press, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. That's what she said on the inside. And guess what? When she got there, she touched him. And Jesus said what to her? He said, not because you touched me, you got whole. <laughs> not because you showed up. He said, your faith is the one that made you whole. We think faith is just what we say. But I come to announce to you, faith is on the inside. And then you're perfect on the outside. In the name of Jesus. What the Bible said, faith without works is dead. And you really believe what God is saying to you. You're going to put some unction behind what you're thinking. You're going to put some legs behind what God said. Hallelujah. She said, she said within herself, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, then I shall be made whole. But Jesus turned about and said to her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith, not Jesus' faith. Your faith, not my garment. Now we know the garment, I can go a whole nother vein. Represented the prayer shawl and the talifa and those little tassels meant something. But the tassels can be there. But if you ain't got no faith, you ain't gonna get no manifestation. This is a powerful church here. This is a powerful ministry. But do you not know that you can come every Sunday? You can come every day of the week. But if you don't activate your faith, you will be a lump on a log. You will just be sitting on your row. Everybody else will have shot off like a rocket. And you're wondering what's happening. Because you didn't change your mind. You didn't activate the word. So it don't matter just because we're there, okay? All of the things was there. Yes, that prayer shawl meant that it brought healing, but there was a whole bunch of people out there need healing. But because she activated her faith, and we have to understand, it was something on the inside. It was something on the inside. I dare you to begin to think about how often and what you think about day to day. If you will begin to take a log of them thoughts that come through your mind and thoughts that you don't even rebuke, you just sit down and think about it. The thoughts of lust that you are going into it, sitting there thinking, well, ain't doing the act, but you all up in the bed, your mind and took you there. As long as you let your mind take you, your body going to send you. You better watch what you're thinking. We understand that in the natural, in the negative, that we don't want to think. But what about the positive? If I can think, the Bible says where in Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, so is a man thinking in his heart. So is he. So is a man thinking in his heart. It's not just that I thought one thought. It's not just that it just went through my mind. But the devil get us huh, when we think of it all day long. Just thinking about just rolling. It's just rolling over. Rolling over in our mind. When we go to bed at night, that's the last thought. We wake up in the morning, that's the next thought. They see you looking at me saying, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Think about your house, don't you worry about. Think about your car, don't you worry about. Think about that thing you worried about, them bills. About your money, about your children. I dare you to stop meditating in the negative 
Amen. And begin to meditate on what God said about the situation. I don't care how crazy it is. Every time the enemy try to tell you, they're going to evict you. You're going to get out your house. You ain't going to have enough money. I dare you to sit there and say, I got more than enough. My God shall supply all of my needs. You can say it out of your mouth, but it's powerful. If on the inside, if you begin to think that thing, begin to speak that thing, down in your belly, you'll get a manifestation. That's what a birthing of it comes. That's what a birthing of what you're believing from. It starts down on the inside. Amen. God showed me that it takes that we are in full belief, totally from the inside out. I can remember our sister's testimony years ago. We were believing for a car. And as we were believing for this car, uh, we didn't have the money, we didn't have the credit, and we didn't have nothing. But how many of you all know that in the kingdom, it's good to have credit, but in the kingdom, it don't get you no rank. Y'all don't hear me, what am I saying? In the kingdom, if your credit is shot to the curb, you need to repent and get it right because you messed it up. But in the kingdom, it's not your credit, it's your faith. It's not your credit, it's your belief. It's your love for God, and that's what determines you are, not about how much this you got, not about none of that. And so we were in a bad place and I was sitting there and I was believing God for a car and I saw this particular car and I never will forget I was sitting in my prayer room. We had been praying and I had been speaking that and we understand about speaking things and calling things into existence but you can speak all day long but if that thing don't drop down and get in your heart, see once it get in your heart, then that's where the womb is. When it get in your heart then that's when you begin to carry it. And after you carry it for a while, anything in your belly, baby, after you carry it in your womb, after a while, you will give birth to whatever you don't let drop down in there. And so I was sitting in the prayer room, and I was sitting there, and I was reading this study, and then the Holy Ghost brought to me. He says, uh, start talking to me about the car. That's a whole nother vein, too. It's one thing when you talk to God about something. It's a whole nother thing when he start talking to you about it. My God! Let me say right there for a second. If you're looking for manifestation, look at what God talking to you about. Whatever he done said, he big enough to bring it to pass. Amen. So I was sitting there. God began to talk to me about the car. And he said, okay. It was like he was saying, you've been believing and you've been confessing. And then he said something to me that almost blew me out the water because it'll mess me up and mess many of us. He said, close your eyes. And I'm like, wait a minute, God, what you talking about? What do you mean? He said, close your eyes. And I closed my eyes. He said, begin to see yourself sitting in that car. I said, wait a minute, that's crazy stuff. New age people got that. He said, a new age folk too. God principle. He said, so as you think it, so are you. He said, close your eyes. I shut my eyes. He said, now get in the car. I'm still in my prayer room. He said, get in the car. I sit down in the car. The Holy Ghost said, he said, begin to smell the newness of the leather. I'm middle of Sunday. Somebody getting that right there. He said, begin to smell the scent of a new car. I sit there with my eyes closed. I said, I got it, God. I smell the scent. He said, now take your hand. He said, adjust the seat that it'll fit to your height. I adjusted the seat. I was sitting in the car. And when I adjusted it, the Holy Ghost said, you just burned your car. Now go and get it. That that you believe in for. You gotta have it in your spirit, but you gotta have it in your soul too. In your mind, in your will, in your intellect, your very being. Gotta begin to breathe that thing, eat that thing, smell that thing. And so he said, You've been having it in your spirit. He said, You've been talking about it. But when you begin to picture it, and when you adjust in the seat, you change the ownership of the person that owned it. Cause you are just in the seat. Huh? Now I belong to you. Huh? Now I'm just gonna get your car. In two weeks. In two weeks, my husband can testify. In two weeks, credit shot to the curb. In two weeks, ain't got no money. God is the 
shoulders of big white Mercedes.